No one carves statues of frightened warriors. If you see one, keep your eyes closed and your ears open. Cursed Shar! You expected many things in this cavern, but a huge reptilian creature wasn't one of them. As Ledwick's dying scream suddenly cut out, you frantically look around for an escape route. The crunching of bones indicates where the creature is, and there seems to be a tunnel to the west. Moving quickly, you run into the tunnel, holding your torch aloft. There are some stones standing in the distance. They could be a perfect hiding place. You run closer and suddenly stop staring in horror. Before you are the perfectly carved statues of terrified humanoids of all sizes, shapes, and races. Upon closer examination, you wonder how a sculptor could be so precise. But a realization hits you like a lead bar as you notice huge bite marks in each statue. The creature here must be turning them to stone to save for later meals. And you'll soon join these statues if you don't escape soon. A slight hissing and the clicking of reptilian claws on stones announces the creature's presence. So you douse your torch and hide behind several group statues. You can hear, but not see, the creature as it shuffles past. The creature is clearly sniffing the air, trying to pick up your scent. Beads of sweat form on your forehead as you do everything in your power to not wipe them away. The creature suddenly moves on, the clacking of its claws fading into the distance. Once you're sure the tunnel is quiet, you breathe a sigh of relief and find your tinderbox hoping to reignite your torch. Your torch refuses to light for a moment, but a flame catches and the tunnel is bathed in light once more. You briefly look for the creature, but it seems gone. You break into a run, not bothering to hide your footsteps as you tear through the tunnel and out into the central cavern. You can smell a cool breeze carrying the scent of leaves. You must be getting close. Not even 100 paces later, you emerge out of the cave onto the small knoll you entered. Finally, some relief. <laughs> Welcome back to a Compendium of Monsters. This week's entry, The Basilisk. Before we continue, please make sure you've subscribed to my channel. It helps me out a lot. Basilisks are a challenge level 3, medium-sized monstrosity. They have an armor class of 15, average hit points of 52, a speed of 20 feet, and a dark vision up to 60 feet. Basilisks have one main ability, Petrifying Gaze. Similar to a Medusa's Petrifying Gaze, a Basilisk can force a creature that both sees the Basilisk and can be seen by the Basilisk that starts its turn within 30 feet to make a constitution saving throw against petrification. On a failed save, the target creature starts to turn to stone, becoming restrained. If it fails the saving throw again, the creature turns to stone. Otherwise, the effect ends, though the creature is not immune to the basilisk trying to petrify it again. A basilisk can be affected by its own reflection within 30 feet of itself, mistaking itself for an adversary. This reflection must be in bright light, so keep a torch or the light can trip handy. Basilisks have a basic attack that hits for moderate damage, though it also has added poison damage that makes it dangerous for low-level adventurers. Basilisks can be found in many different environments arid ones, temperate ones, or tropical ones. Basilisks lair in caves and are most commonly encountered underground, as their slow movement speed is better for ambushes than chasing prey. Marks of a basilisk's territory include statues that look remarkably lifelike, though the statues might have large bites taken out of them. A basilisk can turn petrified stone back into flesh with its saliva, usually as it consumes its prey, though the saliva can, of course, be used to unpetrify a creature so long as it isn't missing any of its major essential organs. Basilisks are believed to be created when a cockerel hatches the egg of a toad or serpent, which is effectively the opposite way to make a cockatrice. Basilisks are believed to poison everything nearby with toxic breath. Though you won't have to worry about that, as the petrification is more than enough to ruin your day. While basilisks are not common above ground, if you're going to travel in the Underdark, you better expect to counter at least a few of them. Warning. Tomb of Annihilation spoilers ahead. My players have encountered basilisks only once so far, in the fane of the Night Serpent. Under a ruined palace in the forbidden city of Omu, the Yuan-Ti of the fane kept two basilisks as pets.
pets and train those pets to charge intruders in order to subdue the hostiles with their petrifying gaze. Torn and Boblia both receive the brunt of a basilisk's gaze during the famed assault on the fame. While Torin managed to stabilize himself, Boblia was turned to stone. Badakas blinded the basilisks with his darkness spell, and the monstrosities were killed. Happily, Boblia is alive and well, though Zaley resurrected her with a different means than basilisk saliva. Anyways, what do you all think of basilisks? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button and smash that like button. I'll see you all next time.